Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine just uh, gazing up at the stars and wondering, you know, what truly extraordinary visitors might be passing through our cosmic neighborhood? Things that maybe challenge everything we thought we knew about space. Well, today we're diving into a fascinating new analysis. It suggests one recent visitor, an interstellar object named Three Aya Atlas, is, well, it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Our deep dive today is based on a recent study by a uh, renowned astrophysicist Avi Loeb. He heads Harvard's Galileo project, and he's discussing the extreme negative polarization of 3IS. And get this, this isn't just another comet. It's showing a series of anomalies so striking they are prompting scientists, Loeb included, to consider some uh, really unconventional possibilities. Yeah, what's particularly significant here is that Look, we've had a few interstellar visitors before. You probably remember one I Omu is and two I Borisov, but three I Tilas, it really appears to be in a league of its own. So this deep dive will explore the specific scientific measurements, the observations that make it so profoundly distinct. We'll explain why they're pushing the boundaries of our sort of conventional understanding of cosmic objects and why we're really being compelled to think outside the box here. It's a, it's a compelling case for something truly unprecedented. Okay, let's start with the big headline then from Loeb's analysis. 3 i last shows an extreme negative polarization. Now, for those of us not, you know, lecturing on radiative processes in astrophysics, what exactly does that mean for you listening? Well, when light bounces off an object, right, it picks up a signature. Think of it like a cosmic fingerprint. This polarization, it basically describes how the light waves are oriented after they scatter off the object's surface. Imagine a light wave wiggling. How it wiggles after hitting 3i at last tells us something fundamental, maybe about its shape, its texture, or uh, its actual composition. And crucially, this fingerprint changes depending on our phase angle. That's just the angle we're looking at it from relative to the sun. So what did Loeb and his team actually find when they measured these specific characteristics for 3A Atlas? Precisely. And what they found regarding that phase angle, it was frankly astonishing. 3 I Atlas is characterized by this extremely deep and narrow negative polarization. The number is negative 2.77%. And that's at a phase angle of just 6.41 degrees. So a very specific viewing angle. To put that in perspective, that's a very strong negative signal, much more than usual. And furthermore, it shows a remarkably low inversion angle. Now, that's the specific point where the polarization flips, right, from negative to positive. Mm. For three eyeglass, that happens at just 17.05 degrees. This particular combination, that deep negative dip and such a low inversion angle, it's simply unheard of. Unheard of in any natural object we've ever studied before. Unheard of. That's a powerful claim in science, isn't it? So how does this specific polarimetric fingerprint, this this wiggle signature, compare to what we do know, you know, other comets, asteroids, both in our system and maybe outside? Oh, it's starkly different, fundamentally different. When we compare this behavior to, well, all known comets, whether they're objects from our own solar system, like, say, 9P Temple 1 or 67 Trium of Garasimenko, or even the other interstellar comet we found, 2I Borisov, 3 Alliance just doesn't fit. See, scientists usually classify comets into high polarization and low polarization groups, but this object's data, it just doesn't align with either category. It truly defies the existing classifications. Loeb actually describes this as evidence of a previously unobserved population of cosmic objects. And the implication there is significant. This polarization anomaly alone suggests 3 i Atlas isn't just, you know, different. It's fundamentally distinct from any natural comet or asteroid we've cataloged. It really is like finding a fingerprint at a crime scene that doesn't match any known species in our database. It forces us to consider that its surface properties, maybe its composition, are unlike anything we've encountered or even anticipated. Wow. Okay, so that's a profound discovery just on its own, a cosmic fingerprint that kind of breaks our whole classification system. Yeah. But this object's uniqueness doesn't stop there, does it? With the polarization. Avi Loeb's analysis points to a whole string of other anomalies that make 3 ITLAs really stand out. It adds layer after layer to this unfolding mystery. Like, um like a list of really unusual traits for a suspect in some cosmic kugunet. Each piece of evidence just makes the case for its unconventional nature even stronger. Precisely. Yeah, let's delve into those additional anomalies, because they truly build a compelling and frankly unique picture for 3 i First, let's talk about its trajectory, how it moved through space. This object has what's called a retrograde trajectory. That means it's moving backward relative to the planets in our solar system, against the flow, essentially. Now, what's really astonishing here is that this backward path is aligned with the ecliptic plane. That's the flat plane where most of our solar system's planets orbit the sun. And it's aligned to within a remarkable five degrees, just five degrees off that plane. Now, think about it. For a random interstellar visitor to just wander into our solar system and align its backward trajectory so precisely with our ecliptic plane, well, that's incredibly improbable. 
the estimated chance probability of that happening naturally. It's about 1 in 500. You know, most natural objects formed in a planetary system tend to orbit in the same general direction. So this precise alignment going against the grain, it's exceptionally rare for just a random encounter. 1 in 500. Hmm. That's... That's definitely statistically significant, isn't it? It certainly raises <laughs> eyebrows. Are there any, like, natural explanations, even mm -hmm. if they're exotic, that scientists might consider for such a specific alignment, or does this immediately kind of push us towards thinking something else is going on? That's a great question, and yes, yeah, scientists always look for natural explanations first. That's the process. For instance, maybe a really unusual gravitational kick from some massive unseen object way out in the outer solar system could, theoretically, alter an object's trajectory in weird ways. But the precision of this alignment, that five degrees, that makes it harder to argue for as just a random event. And it's the combination with the other anomalies that makes it even more compelling. Okay, so second point, let's look at its estimated size. Its diameter is estimated up to 46 kilometers. Now this makes it quite large for an interstellar visitor, much, much larger than Oumuamua, which was just hundreds of meters long, or even Borisov, which is maybe a few kilometers across. So this substantial size, 46 kilometers potentially, gives us another crucial piece of data for characterizing it. And speaking of data, we're actually on the verge of getting even more precise information very, very soon. On October 3rd, 2025, so like really soon, the high-rise camera on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is scheduled to image 3i Atlas, and the resolution will be about 30 kilometers per pixel. That should give us a much tighter limit on its actual size, maybe even its shape. Oh, that's genuinely exciting, knowing we'll have better clarity on its, you know, physical dimensions so soon. That's fantastic. What else, what else makes this cosmic visitor stand out so much? Okay, third point, and this one's really weird. When 3 ILS was further out, at a distance from the sun, about 3 to 4.5 times further than Earth, is it showed this peculiar glow or plume. Now, normally for comets, this plume, the tail, right? Mm. It always extends away from the sun. It's pushed by solar wind, by radiation pressure. But for 3 ILS, this plume extended towards the sun. This feature, they call it an anti-tail. And it has apparently never been observed before for comets. This isn't just some quirky little detail. It fundamentally challenges our models of how comets interact with the sun, how they shed material. It's a complete inversion of the behavior we expect. An anti-tail. So it's literally glowing in the wrong direction for a comet. Wow. That alone seems like it should lead to some serious head scratching, maybe some re-evaluations in planetary science. Okay, and finally, you mentioned its composition was strange too. What did they find there? Yes. The fourth, and I'd say perhaps the most intriguing anomaly, comes from the peculiar composition of the gas plume around it. Spectroscopic analysis showed it's primarily carbon dioxide, CO2, like 87% by mass. It's huge. Then carbon monoxide, CO, at about 9%. And water, H2O, makes up uh, most of the remaining 4%. Hmm. Now, while CO2 plumes aren't completely unknown, this specific dominance is really unusual. But here's where it gets even more compelling. The plume features nickel without iron. This specific combination, nickel without significant iron, well, it's known to exist in industrially produced nickel alloys used right here on Earth. Additionally, they detected cyanide. And crucially, both the nickel and the cyanide concentrations rose sharply as the object got closer to the sun. That implies active outgassing, like sublimation of these specific components. So this combination, the highly unusual gas ratios, plus the presence of what looks like an industrial signature, nickel without iron, that is exceptionally peculiar for a natural comet. Okay, so let me just recap this cosmic rap sheet we've built up. We have an object with unprecedented negative polarization, a fingerprint unlike anything else, a statistically improbable retrograde trajectory aligned perfectly almost with the ecliptic, a massive estimated size, potentially up to 46 kilometers, an anti-tail that seems to defy basic cometary physics, and a plume composed of unusual materials, including this nickel without iron signature that sounds suspiciously oh, industrial. That's a quite a compelling list of clues, isn't it? For our cosmic mystery. It absolutely is. And this whole collection of anomalies, it naturally raises a crucial question. How does 3 ILS compare to the other interstellar objects we've actually detected? Remember, <laughs> one Iomamua, discovered back in 2017, that one was perplexing because it showed no gas or dust emission, none at all. Yet it experienced this weird non-gravitational acceleration. It was like it was being gently pushed, but without any visible jet or outgassing. Its extreme elongated shape, the lack of cometary activity, it led to intense speculation, as you probably recall. Then, in 2019, we found Obai Borisov. And Borisov, while also interstellar, largely behaved like a, well, a familiar comet. It displayed a clear dust and gas coma, a tail. Mm. 
it pretty much fit within our established understanding of how comets work. Right, right. So we had the really enigmatic sort of silent Oumuamua and then the much more conventional comet like Borisov. How does Three Eye Atlas fit into that picture? Is it like one or the other? Or? Well, it's fascinating and really key here is that Three Eye Atlas stands apart from both. Unlike Oumuamua, it clearly shows out gassing and has a plume. But that plume behaves in profoundly unexpected ways with the anti-tail and that very unusual composition. And unlike Borisov, which largely confirmed our expectations for what an interstellar comet might look like, Three Eyeless seems to defy those expectations at almost every single turn. Its polarization, its trajectory, its plume dynamics, its chemical makeup, they are all in a category of their own. It just doesn't fit the mold. This unique, unprecedented set of anomalies, especially that composition detail with a nickel without iron, it makes it fundamentally different from its predecessors. And this is precisely why Avi Loeb states that these unprecedented anomalies are, quote, leaving the option of a technological origin for it as a viable alternative. Technological origin. Wow, that is, that's a pretty provocative conclusion, certainly sparks the imagination. But, you know, in science, we always explore all possibilities first, right? Are there any other, maybe extreme, but still natural hypotheses that scientists might still be exploring before jumping to such a revolutionary idea? Like, what kind of absolutely bizarre natural formation could potentially lead to such a strange collection of traits? That's a critical point, absolutely. And while Loeb raises the technological origin as a serious consideration based on the data, the scientific community is, and definitely should be, rigorously exploring every potential natural explanation first. That's how science works. For instance, um, some might hypothesize an extremely unusual formation environment in another star system, something totally different from ours. Maybe that could lead to a comet with a fundamentally different chemical makeup or internal structure. Perhaps it formed, I don't know, in a super-Earth's atmosphere or got ejected from a system with really unique mineral deposits. However, the challenge is finding a single, coherent, natural explanation that accounts for all these distinct anomalies together. The extreme polarization and the precise retrograde alignment and the anti-tail and the specific plume chemistry with that nickel-iron issue, it becomes increasingly challenging to explain all of them with one natural scenario. And the more anomalies you stack up that seem to point in a consistent, unusual direction, the harder it gets to find a singular, natural, non-contrived explanation. That makes perfect sense. It really is the sheer accumulation of all these unusual traits that's so compelling here. And for you, our listener, the really exciting news, as we mentioned, is that more data is coming very, very soon. That high-rise camera imaging on October 3rd, 2025, that's going to give us our tightest constraint yet on its nucleus diameter. It might potentially reveal its precise shape and size, which could be hugely informative. And Avi Loeb himself plans to update its rank on his Loeb scale. That's a metric he uses to assess the likelihood of an object being artificial once that new data is in. And look, this isn't just abstract astronomy, is it? It's about pushing the very boundaries of what we understand about the universe and what's actually possible out there. Every new interstellar visitor gives us this invaluable glimpse into other star systems. And 3 I well, it might just be the most intriguing postcard we've ever received, one that's forcing us to really rethink our cosmic assumptions. So today, we've taken a deep dive into 3 i It's an interstellar object that's truly shaking up our understanding of cosmic visitors. From its... Uh, unprecedented negative polarization, that highly improbable trajectory, yeah. to its bizarre anti-tail and that peculiar plume chemistry. It's a genuine celestial enigma. It demands our attention and really challenges our conventional classifications. Absolutely. These anomalies, they really compel us to consider that the universe is just full of surprises, way more than we probably imagine. Yeah. And we have to be prepared to follow the data wherever it leads us, even if it challenges our you know, deeply held preconceptions about what's natural. Mm. Science thrives on these kinds of mysteries, and the Three Atlas is providing an abundance of them right now. It's really pushing the limits of our knowledge. So as we eagerly await those new images from the high-rise camera in just a few weeks, consider this thought. If an object like 3 I Atlas can so thoroughly defy all our expectations for natural comets and asteroids, what other forms of cosmic travelers, or maybe even phenomena we haven't conceived of yet, might be out there, just waiting for us to develop the right tools and maybe the right open-mindedness to truly see and understand them? Thank you for joining us on this deep dive.